I'm Fergus Kennedy, a marine biologist and photographer based in the UK. Ever since I was a kid, I've had really vivid dreams about being underwater. There's something really magical and alien about it. But the creature that really stood out was the manta ray. Something really amazing about the way they move and the way they look. It's, you know, it's like nothing else on Earth. Well, now I've got the chance to go to one of the best spots for finding manta rays. And I really want to do some filming to capture that alien nature of the manta rays. The problem is that even modern cinema cameras become very heavy and awkward once you've put them in an underwater housing. So for trips like this, the 5D4 hits a perfect sweet spot between really high quality video and small size. And when you're travelling a long way, that makes a big difference. To find mantas, I've got to fly over 12,500 kilometres to Komodo National Park in Indonesia. This volcanic archipelago sandwiched between the Indian and Pacific Oceans has fascinated scientists for centuries. I'm blown away by these islands with their jagged green flanks and exotic inhabitants. I really couldn't have asked for a more spectacular backdrop on my hunt for these giant rays. I mean, if you look at these hillsides here, you would never guess that just under the water there's an incredible diversity of life. Anything from the fish life to the corals and all the other invertebrates. And this area here is in fact one of the global hotspots for marine diversity. So while we're heading towards some of the known manta spots, I feel really lucky to have the chance to explore these beautiful reefs. During the day, you can see a bewildering array of amazing underwater sights. But after nightfalls, you can expect to meet a whole different gang of weird and wonderful characters. It's any marine biologist's dream and a great opportunity for photos. It's 6am, um, I've just had my cup of coffee, so kind of waking up now. Exciting day though, we've just got to the location called Manta Alley, which is between Komodo Island and Siaba Island. And um, supposedly this is an area which is really good for concentrating manta rays. I think they move up and down this channel. Um, and so in a few minutes we'll be putting on our dive kit and jumping in the water and hopefully we'll have some good encounters with manta rays. With the sky a bit overcast, I'm worried we aren't going to get the really great light I was hoping for. But as is often the case when chasing wildlife, the light is kind of secondary. I need to find them first. We did a whole dive at Manta Alley for nearly an hour and didn't see any mantas at all. We went down to 25 metres, had a look in the normal feeding area for the mantas, there was nothing there. We swam all the way around the little rocky island, coming up gradually, um, and didn't spot any. It's still a stunning place to dive, but I was really there for the mantas, so I couldn't help but feel a bit frustrated. And then after we got out onto the boat, we suddenly spotted three mantas at the surface, so we jumped back in, almost empty tanks, and got a few really nice passes. And with the really strong backlighting, I'm relying on Canon Log to preserve all the detail in the underside of these rays. We've got another dive coming up just after breakfast, so um, that's another chance to spot some more mountains. These rays cruising around the rocks are much closer to the surface than I'd expected. They've obviously found some tasty plankton in the shallows. But that's great for us. Rather than wasting air searching at 25 metres, we could spot them from the boat. And sure enough, they're ready and waiting in the shallows.
That was a great dive. Really strong current coming down between two big pillars of rock, but all of the mantas went there to get clean, so they were all hanging out. You had to really fin to stay in the same place against that current. But it meant that you could get quite close to them, and I think I got some nice shots of the little cleaner fish. I was really pleased to be able to see the mantas so close and the footage was working well despite the flat light. Unfortunately the visibility wasn't great down at this end of the Komodo Islands so the crew decided it would be worth looking at another known manta spot up in the north. And while we travel up there it's a great chance to look back over what I've shot so far. I'm really happy with some of this footage. It's come out really nicely. I've done a, a little quick grade on it. Wide rectilinear lenses are really hard underwater to get um, really sharp, good contrasty images, but um, this 11 to 24 uh, seems to be working really well underwater, both for stills and video. I'm really happy with how it's looking. Really vivid colors, lots of detail, so fantastic. We may have one last, last opportunity now to dive with the Manta, so I'm hoping to get a bit more. This final dive is my last chance to look for Mantas here in the Komodo Islands, and I'm dying for another really great encounter before heading back. Once in the water, the currents were flowing fast again, and I'm nervous we're going to be swept straight past any mantas that might be around. So after being swept along for about 20 minutes and spotting mantas way in the distance, we ended up at a spot that was sheltered from the worst of the current. There's no obvious cleaning station here, but the guide thinks we're better off saving our air and staying put. I think ever since I first saw manta rays as a child in books, uh, they've inspired me and I've wanted to see one, I want to spend time with them. It's something about the way they move, they're, they're incredibly graceful, but they're also very weird, they're a weird shape. Um, you know, it's definitely like something out of a, a science fiction film. We were right there immersed in their element and there were times when I had to peel my eyes off the rear LCD of the camera and actually take in what was going on around me. It really was um, that special an experience for me. It was definitely a somewhat of a dream fulfilled but I still want to come back and do more. I always want slightly better light or slightly calmer conditions or something like that so it's just part of the, the kind of photography addiction. You always want to come back and do it again. <laughs>